because you might be thinking for y equals sine of 1 over x, if it's an oscillating function, that must mean it can never have a converging limit value because it's always changing, right? Well, I'm going to choose an easier function to work with, y equals sine of x, because for this one, it's very easy for me to graph it without a calculator. And I want to show you that clearly at the origin, for example, once again, the limit is zero because using the pencil test, you can approach the same value of zero from the left or the right. So maybe you're confused even more now and you're just wondering, okay, Dave, I feel like I'm stuck. I tried plotting some values. And as I see here in this table, when I plugged in values that are rapidly approaching zero, I'm getting a value like uh, negative 0 0.306 approximately for a very small X value of 0 0.0001. And be very careful here because a lot of students will do this. They'll try five, six values and they'll run away with what they think the answer is. But look at this graph here because you'll notice that if you keep taking terms out, you're going to see more and more that the output function y is going to very rapidly keep flipping back and forth between negative and positive values. So what does that tell us about what the limit of the original problem happens to be? Okay, let's move on because that's really not working with what we're doing above. And this table here is not really a proof. So let's get a little bit more mathematically precise in such a way as the following. I want to take sine of 1 over x and be a little strategic about my choices of the input x here. What I want to do is I want to say, okay, x is going to be a term in some infinite series where every single term in that series here will give me an output of zero. 